Assalamu alaikum my dear students. Good morning grade 6. How are you all? I hope all of you are fine. Welcome again to a new Islamic session. My dear students, grade 6, we will complete the same lesson about Surah Al-Mulk from Ayah 25 till Ayah 30. Lesson to be learned. This is in Unit 6, Lesson 1, page number 176. So, let's pray to Allah to ease our way by making our teaching and learning activity a truly beneficial one. Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'an wa rizqan tayyiban wa amalan mutakabbalan. Rabbi zidni ilma. By the end of this lesson, you will be able, inshallah, to recite the verses while observing the rules of recitation, explain the meanings of Quranic vocabulary, we did this last time, and explain the overall meaning of the verses. Number four, explain the rule concerning invoking evil upon others. And infer the connection between faith and having trust in Allah, glory be to him. Suggest solutions for conserving the gift of water. And read the verses properly by heart. So, grade 6, last time, in the first part, we discussed about the first concept that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the unseen especially about the day of judgment the time of the day of judgment is one of the unseen matter which are known just by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today inshallah we will move to the second concept in this surah about regret of the deniers on the day of judgment deniers who are the deniers the disbelievers and regret means they are not believing. They refuse to believe on the day of judgment. The verses depict the state of deniers on the day of judgment. When they see their promised punishment close to them. The punishment. The punishment is close to them. Signs of anxiety, regret, and humiliation appear on their faces signs of sorrow and regret and humiliation appear on their faces why because of the sins the mistakes evils and wrong deeds they committed in this worldly life keepers of hell the angels keepers of hell will reprimand them by saying Okay, what, what they will say? This is the punishment you were asking for in mockery. وَيَقُولُونَ مَتَى هَذَا الْوَعْدُ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ they were, they were asking about this punishment for in mockery and denial. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the past tense. So, فَلَمَّا رَأَوْهُ When they saw for the future to stress it certainly and if it really happened. And here, grade 6, I want you to give me your opinion how you will behave in the following cases. First one, your brother keeps postponing prayers out of laziness. Without reason, he is just not praying on time what you are going to do i advise him to pray on time and remind him of the reward of prayer and how prayer is important yes next one your classmate was absent for a medical reason and couldn't understand the lesson by himself what you are going to do for sure help him and explain the lessons he missed. Excellent, good behavior. Number three, your, bro your brother pretends to be ill to get a sick leave. 
what you are going to do i advise him not to do that and encourage him to work hard this is a kind of cheating yes last one your sister quarreled with her classmate fighted with her classmate i advise her to reconcile with her classmate and let us read together wishing good for others a muslim is always keen on wishing good for others wish everything good to your brother to your sister to every muslim because if one wishes evil for others his heart will be filled with hatred and envy and he will not be loved by whom by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by people so you are a good muslim you should wish good for others to keep your heart full of love and and what and good for others because if you wish evil for someone what will happen your heart will be filled with what with hatred with envy and you will not be loved by allah but if you wish good for others you will be loved by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet after disbelievers invoked destruction upon the messenger of allah peace be upon him and upon the believers allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse قل ارايتم ام اهلكني الله ومن معي او رحمنا فمن يجير الكافرين من عذاب اليم so the disbelievers invoked destruction to whom upon the prophet and messenger and the believers then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah which is say o muhammad have you considered whether allah should cause my death and those with me or have mercy upon us who can protect the disbelievers from a painful punishment even if the destruction happened to me and the believers who will save you from the what who will protect you and save you from the punishment so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered his prophet muhammad peace be upon him to de- to tell the deniers that the only way they could be saved from the punishment of allah is to repent and go back to the religion of allah there is no other way than this to repent tawbah and go back to islam to the religion of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they will not benefit from the occurrence of the evil they wish for muslims and their problems will not be solved by wishing evil for muslims there is no other way just to repent and go back to islam if they wish evil things for muslims no benefit from this wish and let us find the answer of these questions the following The reason that disbelievers invoke destruction upon the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and upon the be- the believers why they invoke destruction for the prophet and the believers because they for sure they hate the prophet and the believers and also Islam that's why they invoke destruction upon them okay next question the implication of the question in the saying of allah in the ayah qul araaytum in ahlakani allah wa man ma'iya aw rahimana faman yujiru alkafirina min adhab alim the implication of this question in english say o muhammad have you considered whether allah should cause my death and those with me or have mercy upon us so death or mercy destruction or mercy if allah uh, bestowed upon us mercy or destruction who can protect the disbelievers from a painful punishment so the implication here the destruction or survival of believers 
will not save the disbelievers from a painful punishment. So, this is the end of our lesson for today. Thank you, great saints. Jazakumullahu khairan. We will complete the last part of this lesson about Surah Al-Mulk next class, insha'Allah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Glory is to you, O Allah, and the praise is to you. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but you. I seek your forgiveness and repent to you.